How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to look at my setup in Z, the current code editor which I use to write all my Python scripts in. And if at any point you're curious about trying out Z, feel free to follow the link in the description box down below where you can download Z for free. But with all that being said, let's jump right into it. So the very first thing I want to cover is that when you open up your settings file and you edit the settings in settings.json, here you're going to have the option to edit your settings in JSON. And the reason I'm showing you this is because if you want to copy my layout or my setup, you're going to have to go to my GitHub repository. And I'm going to leave this in the description box down below as well. But once you go to my page, just go down to this section over here where it says code editor and tap on my setup. Then inside here, I have a readme which I generated with AI. So that's just a little disclaimer. I put no effort into creating this readme so there may be some inaccuracies but the readme gives you a quick explanation of what all the parameters do. So if at any point you're confused about what any of these do, just read the readme. Now, if you actually want to copy the settings, go to the settings.json. And here you'll see all of the settings which I'm currently using in Z. So feel free to copy this and paste it in your settings.json. And I should briefly mention that if you scroll all the way down, you'll notice that there's also some Rust features and you are not required to copy this part. You can remove this and you can remove the LSP if you are not using Rust. It is not required for writing code in Python. The reason I have this is because I have a second channel where I teach Rust and I use this when I'm programming in Rust. So once you copy and paste this, you should have exactly the same code editor setup which I have over here, which means when you type in def hello, you'll have the same syntax coloring which I have. And one thing you might notice in the settings.json is that the theme is set to JetBrains New Dark. You're probably going to have to install this if you want to use it. And to do that, you just go to themes and tap on install themes. And here you can search for the themes. Next, I want to teach you about tasks. So next, what we're going to do is hold shift command plus P and this will probably be shift control plus P on Windows. And here, what we're going to do is open up the tasks. And here I defined a command for running Python scripts. The label is just a label for the command. The command is the actual command you want to use. And the argument is going to be the current Z file. And this will not use a new terminal and will allow concurrent runs. And once again, I have the same thing for Rust. So if you are just using Python, you do not need this part. You can just remove that. And all you need to do is create this one task. And just to show you what this is going to end up doing, imagine you have a script here and you want to print hello, Bob. Usually if you want to run a script in the terminal, you have to type in Python three or Python and the script that you want to run. Personally, I find this to be quite annoying. So what I did instead is create a shortcut, which allows me to run this script as a task. And right now I binded it to the key command plus R. So, Let's search for the key map feature in Z by holding shift command plus P. And here we're going to open up the key map. And recently they updated the UI. So here you can configure the keystrokes and what they do. But what I'm used to is the keymap.json file, which you can find in the top right hand corner. And inside here, I have the keymap.json file, which I am using. And I have one for the code editor and one for the workspace. Now I know this might be overwhelming, so I'm going to remove a lot of this just to show you how you can spawn a task. So for this example, I'm going to remove the editor part because that's not really relevant in this case. And I'm going to remove all of this. So what I did here is create a list of JSON, which contains a context, which will be set to workspace and some bindings. Then you have to select the combination of keys that you want to use to spawn a task. Once again, I have one for Rust, which is not relevant for this video. And inside here, we have the task that we want to use. And to use it, we have to write task colon colon spawn and provide the task name. And the task name is the label, which I just told you was useless. So it appears that it's not really that useless. And with this, you can go back to main.py and you can print something else such as goodbye, Bob. And then you can run the script using your shortcut but I'm going to set this back to what I had earlier and I'm also going to upload this to my GitHub repository. I'm just not really sure how this is going to translate to Windows. So you might have to manually change these 
so they fit the Windows conventions, because I'm sure you guys have control and not command. And finally, there's one last thing I want to show all of you regarding my setup, and that's how you can create snippets. One snippet that I use a lot is my main entry snippet. And all this does is create a main entry point and use the if name is equal to main check. And that just makes it a lot easier for me to write safe code. Now, another snippet I use quite often is this function snippet. It allows me to create a new function, which I will call connect, to define some parameters, to define a return type. And in case I don't know what I want to do inside here just yet, it's going to raise a not implemented error. So that's quite good in case I decide to call this someday in the future and I forget to implement the details, I'm going to get that not implemented error by default. Of course, if you don't believe in errors, you can just add an ellipsis or pass, that's up to you. But for the way I like to code, I love raising the not implemented error since I'm quite forgetful and it helps me out when I forget things. Now, once again, we need to open up the search bar and here we need to search for something called configure snippets. And then we need to search for Python. And these are going to be the snippets that I use in my python.json. Now, this is something I'm going to leave in my GitHub repository as well, because it's much easier to copy and paste. And it doesn't really matter whether you're on Windows or Mac. And all you need to do is change the prefix to a name that you want to use to trigger this snippet. So here I have the if name is equal to main check. And below I have the snippet, which creates a new function. And I'm not going to cover how to create these snippets in this video, but if you are curious, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make a follow-up video. And while I'm here, I'm going to change the description to main entry points. So yeah, you can find this on my GitHub repository. All you need to do is copy and paste it in. And the next time you write code inside Python, you can test it out by typing in def and tapping on enter. Then to use it, all you need to do is type in the function name and continuously tap on tab each time you want to move on to the next point. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any other questions regarding my setup in Z. It's quite vanilla. I'm not using all of the features just yet, and I will create more videos regarding Z in the near future. But for now, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.